So why is it that we are susceptible to cancer? The evolution of maintenance mechanisms, which is associated with the evolution of aging, has been such that maintenance is neglected for good reasons. The neglect of maintenance allows better reproduction. We have stem cells and we need them for repair, but they are pre-adapted for metastasis. There really aren't genes for cancer. Most of the genes that are involved in cancer actually are doing something else early in development. The possibility for somatic mutation is simply enormous. The numbers are overwhelming. So what are the causes of aging? We have covered some of these in previous lectures, but it's a good idea here to have a recap because this is the context in which our vulnerability for cancer arises. Aging is a byproduct of selection for reproductive performance. That's the essential idea. In this process, maintenance is neglected in order to improve reproduction. Aging arises through the evolutionary accumulation of many genes that have positive effects on fitness early in life and negative effects on fitness late in life. So their benefits outweigh their costs from the point of view of evolution, which is not the point of view of a patient with cancer. First, we reduced mortality that is caused by infectious disease. We did it with hygiene, vaccines, and antibiotics, mostly in the 20th century. Then cardiovascular disease emerged as a major killer. Then we improved the prevention and, and treatment of cardiovascular disease, but we started dying more frequently of cancer and Alzheimer's. There isn't really any end of that in sight. Now, the second uh, idea in why we are vulnerable to cancer is the multicellular covenant. So this picture is designed to elicit the notion of multicellularity. This is a multicellular alga. And the bright green dots are the reproductive cells. The smaller, darker green dots are the somatic cells that are engaged in photosynthesis. And they gather the energy and give it to the reproductive cells, which get the genes into the next generation. So somatic cells stop reproducing. Germ cells propagate the genes. Stem cells repair tissue. Cancer breaks this covenant. Most of the cancers originate in stem cells. So stem cells arose with multicellularity. They're a great innovation. They're about a billion years old. They appear to divide slowly and they retain the potential to differentiate. Slow division would reduce cancer frequency. Potential to differentiate and to move pre-adapts them to a cancerous lifestyle. They are positioned all over the body to replace cells that wear out and are discarded, particularly in bone marrow, in lungs, intestine, and skin, in the epithelia. Their capacity for self-renewal and their potential to differentiate pre-adapt them to a cancerous lifestyle. Now, how are somatic cells normally kept under control? Well, Early in development, the germ cell, germ line, is physically isolated, at least in organisms like us. That prevents invasion from the soma, so that keeps somatic cells from defecting from the covenant and going back and getting their genes into the next generation. Tumor suppressor genes control differentiation and deal with damage. So if a cell starts to proliferate when it should not, it receives a signal to commit suicide, apoptosis. If DNA is damaged, an attempt is made to repair it, but if the damage cannot be repaired, then the cell receives a signal to kill itself. Both of these responses are controlled by the tumor suppressor gene P53. In cancer biology, you hear a lot about P53. One crucial mutation on the way to cancer is the one that disables the response to a signal to commit suicide. So here is a figure of a T cell in orange bound to an apoptosing cell. So that T cell has received a signal that the DNA in this apoptosing cell is defective and cannot be repaired 
and it's giving it a signal to commit suicide. Cancer ignores that signal. So where do the somatic mutations come from? Well, some of it's bad luck. There are mistakes during the duplication of the genome and cell division. Every time a cell divides, about three billion nucleotides have to be copied, and no copying process is perfect. Evolution has also adjusted the mutation rate long term to be low but non-zero. It's about 10 to the minus ninth per nucleotide per cell division, about one in a billion probability that a single nucleotide at a specific site will mutate in a cell division. Somatic mutations can be increased by exposure to environmental mutagens like ultraviolet light or tobacco smoke. There are free radicals that are released during inflammation, protons. So inflammation can actually cause somatic mutation. In most cases, chronic exposure is much worse than acute exposure. So something like a long-term helicobacter pylori infection in the gut, in the stomach, which is making stomach ulcers, is going to provi provide chronic exposure, a lot of inflammation, and that can then lead to somatic mutation causing gastric uh, cancer. Inactivation of a DNA repair gene like p53 greatly increases the mutation rate. Now, are there really genes that are for cancer? Well, there aren't really any genes that are designed to produce cancer. There are genes, mutations in which can lead to cancer. Most genes for cancer actually function in early embryogenesis. They mediate cell migration, cell adhesion, induction, clonal proliferation, other normal functions. They are healthy genes that are turned off during terminal differentiation of tissue. It is carcinogenic mutations that disturb the epigenetic controls on these genes that release normal cell functions at developmentally inappropriate points. So these genes are examples of antagonistic pleiotropy. If natural selection were to protect us from cancer by eliminating these genes, which all have useful functions in early embryogenesis, then early development would fail. Instead, selection has reinforced controls and provided mechanisms to detect and correct or eliminate cells that have precancerous mutations. So a heritable dis uh, predisposition to cancer often involves a heritable deficiency in these control and surveillance mechanisms. We should also recognize that not all somatic mutations are equally dangerous. About 1% of the genes in the genome, that's about 350, are involved in producing cancer in oncogenesis. It is usually mutations in stem cells, not in differentiated tissue, that produce cancer. Mutations that occur early in development are the most important because they then have uh, the chance to produce a lineage of many cells within which other mutations can then accumulate. Each cell lineage in the body then develops a unique history. With more than 10 to the 16th cells per individual per lifetime, the cell lineage history within each of us is larger than the history of all of the individual humans who have ever lived. So we have to recognize that the number of cell division events going on in producing an individual human is enormous and carries with it enormous opportunity for somatic mutation. That's important because cancer is a numbers game. Cancers result when a series of somatic mutations accumulate. And there are a lot of somatic mutations. During development, the single-celled zygote expands to about 10 to the 13th to 10 to the 14th cells. That requires about the same total number of cell divisions. The somatic mutation rate per gene per cell division is about 10 to the minus 7th or 10 to the minus 6th. And if we put those numbers together, the number of total somatic mutation events per gene per gene per individual is about 10 to the 6th to 10 to the 8th. 
every gene in the genome mutates many times in the soma of every individual. That's a rather frightening conclusion, but it comes inevitably from some pretty simple arithmetic. So why are some tissues more susceptible to cancer than to others? The epithelium in lungs and skin is more exposed to carcinogens in the environment than are other tissues. In general, cancer is li more likely in mitotically active tissues for each round of mitosis is an opportunity for mutation. So we see more cancers in the hematopoietic cells, the leukemias and lymphomas, which are coming from lineages of immune cells than we do in red blood cell cancers. We see endometrial cancer, but not fallopian tube cancer because the endometrium is dividing with each menstrual cycle. We see cancers of secretory tissues in gut, breast, cervix, prostate, and so forth, but not in the smooth muscle of the gut or in the smooth muscle of the reproductive system. Children are much more susceptible to brain and bone cancers than adults because those tissues are growing rapidly in children with many cell divisions, but they are not, divide, uh, they are not growing actively in adults, which do not have very many cells that are dividing in their brain and in their bone. Now when cancers do appear in non-mitotically active tissues, they are likely to be secondary sites resulting from metastases from primary tumor. So to summarize, we age as a byproduct of selection for reproduction and that means that maintenance has been neglected in older organisms for good reasons to support earlier in life, better reproductive performance. We need stem cells to maintain our tissues, but mutations in stem cells can add to characteristics that predispose stem cells to become cancerous. So if a stem cell turns on some of its capacities at inappropriate times and places, it can easily become cancerous. We do need a modest mutation rate to maintain evolution, and the opportunities then for somatic mutation are immense. So even though the mutation rate has been adjusted down to 10 to the minus ninth per nucleotide per cell division, which is the low rate needed by evolution, the number of cell divisions in somatic development is so great that there are millions of somatic mutations. We need cell functions early in development that would be cancerous later in development if not properly controlled. And so if there are mutations to the control systems, cancer de can develop. Humans are especially vulnerable because we have a long post-reproductive period and because we are exposed to novel risk factors and we have an unusual sexuality. The bottom line is that we trade vulnerability to cancer for valuable benefits, reproduction, tissue maintenance, evolvability, development, and sexuality.